Hey everyone, happy Thursday! Uh, tonight we are continuing on the Orifel block of the month. This is for Tuscany, uh, and this is my block that I designed for the Orifel block of the month. So thank you guys for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, I'm here for about an hour and I work for, on projects from beginning to end so you guys can be part of the whole process along the way. Uh, so like I said, we are continuing on the Orifil block of the month. Uh, quilt block of the month. This is July's block. Uh, I'm, I happen to be the July designer, so I'm very ex especially excited, excited for this month. Uh, and uh, we are making it out of fabrics that I have in my stash. So a little bit different than what the photo was in the uh, Orphil, on the Orphil blog and, and everything. Uh, I'm using my own fabrics this time and I just kind of love how it's turning out. So we actually have the sewing done. We finished that last night. So we got our little uh, farmhouse, our Tuscan farmhouse here. We are going to start stitching the embroidered lavender fields. So you can stop right now where you're at. That's totally fine. Uh, but I am going to go and add in all of the extra embroidery into the, um, the piece. We are also going to add these little windows as well. So we have it all ready to go. And that is the plan for tonight, you guys. All right. Thank you for joining me. Okay. I have uh, the instructions here. So if you scroll uh, in the instructions to uh, this page here, you're going to start to get the instructions for the embroidery. And on the last page here, it does have that, oh, out of here. It does have that um, template for the windows that you can print out and, and trace uh, for the windows here. So, all right, I think I'm going to start tonight with the uh with the field so the lavender fields that's that's what i'm going to stitch in all of these dark uh gray stripes here i have two skeins of um this is the color that i'm using is 554 it's that it's a, just a pretty lavender uh, feel free to use whatever you have on hand um and you know i think a lot of people are maybe doing red so they can have poppies instead of lavender and i i love that idea i think go for it uh please share your photos on the penguin and fish crafters group it's been awesome to see what you guys are working on but i do have two just in case the one is is not enough um so i think i'm going to start by doing uh this strip here and then we'll see how long that takes and then after we're done with that uh, will work on these windows. I already have them sketched in from last night just with a pencil. I just traced right through my fabric here with a pencil. You can see the little rectangles there. There is no pattern for the lavender. However, they are kind of, they're made up of uh, single chain stitches that are all in one direction and uh, uh, just scattered about. So you can kind of see right here, all of the single chain stitches go upward. So they're all like upside down teardrop shapes. And I am just placing them randomly around. So it looks like a, um, just trying to get to the beginning here. So it looks like kind of a random, random pattern uh, for this. So you can feel free to actually draw some shapes uh, for, for it if you want it to look more like a bush, but I'm just going straight up with them. Uh, and I'm also leaving, you can see a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around where I'm not putting any stitching. That's because we're gonna be sewing this and I don't wanna sew through my stitches. Uh, so just keep that in mind as we work. I'm leaving that quarter inch seam allowance around. So, all right, let's get going on this. Oh, Colleen is saying hi from the left coast. I'm working on the, um, a second hedgehog backpack. Yay! So the hedgehog backpack was last month's embroidery of the month. That's awesome. Uh, I'm excited to start stitching this embroidery of the month uh, after we were done with this project as well this week. 
I think we'll probably go a couple days into next week on here too. So, all right, I'm going to just, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to use this whole thing. So I'm going to just slide the little papers off. I'm going to grab one end and uh, I'm going to cut maybe about 24 inch inches. I might go a little bit longer. Um, there, we'll go, we'll go about here, just over 24 inches. And uh, I'm not going to actually use a hoop for this. I think uh, this single chain stitch actually works really well uh, without a hoop, so we're going to be fine without one. I am going to split my strands. So six strand embroidery floss comes with six, six uh, little strands here. I'm going to split it into three. And what that will do is just give me thinner, uh, thinner line weight, basically. Like my, my stitches won't be so fat. Um, and that's fine if you want it like that, but I think I'll also save some thread doing it that way too. I, I prefer the three strands. Feel free to use two, use one. Uh, the less strands you use, the thinner the stitch will look. Um, the more strands, the thicker. And uh, six strands is actually, if you're using quilting weight fabric, that might actually be a little bit difficult to stitch through. So I, I recommend the three. So how I separate them is I kind of isolate one strand. So there we go. And I'm going to just pull on that strand while I hold all the rest in between my fingers here. And it's going to bunch up like crazy and feel like it's going to get in a big knot. But once the strand comes out, it just kind of relaxes. And I just run my, my finger through it uh, to get it completely relaxed. And then I'm going to just pull two more strands out in the same way. Uh, you got to pull them one at a time, otherwise it will actually knot up. But it goes really fast, so one, two, three. All done. So these are three strands waiting for uh, next time, but we'll start with these. I'm just going to put them back together again. It's much faster than trying to pull three strands like this and letting the middle dangle, uh, which is how I did it for years and years until someone uh, showed me how to do this on my Facebook lives here and uh, I I only do it this way now. It's so fast. Don't you put all your floss on bobbins? Um, I do sometimes, Rebecca. So I do have a big stash of um, uh, embroidery floss on uh, the bobbins, but I happen to have uh, I like this color for the lavender, and I happen to have a few skeins, and I know I went through um, over one skein for this, uh, just with all of the little little guys. So I, I ended up just using new, but um, typically, yeah, I, I store the remainders on there. Actually, I kind of, I've been making them into those um, pom-poms lately, so I've just been throwing them in my little bundle there, uh, my little container of scraps. All right, so I'm just threading the needle here. I'm using an embroidery needle. It's got a sharp point uh, versus a cross stitch needle, which has a more blunt point. The sharp point goes through the fabric easier and it has a big enough eye um, to get the thread through. So I'm actually gonna start, uh, I'm not gonna tie a knot and then do my stitching. I'm actually going to uh, leave a strand of floss uh, like maybe four inches or so that I can weave into the backs of the stitches later. I think it makes the back just cleaner and I think um, the weaving in the stitches holds up a little bit better. To, so to start, uh, I'm just going to tie a knot here. Oh yes, Linda, so this would be a great opportunity to try the thread conditioner, wouldn't it? Okay, so let's see. I, I actually ended up getting all three and now I can't place where I put the real one, but I have these. So these are some thread conditioners that I got from Wisecraft Handmade. So uh, you can check out Wisecraft, spelled like this, wisecrafthandmade.com. And they have these thread conditioners that I was going to test out, and I have not even used one yet. Uh, the I, They have three different flavors, and she sent me um, all three. I think the, the one I brought to my parents' house, and I... Um, didn't unpack it yet, but so here's here's the rainfall one. It smells so good, you guys. And it's just like a beeswax, and let's see what else is in it. Beeswax and coconut oil and some fragrance, and it's just in this cute little tin. 
um, just this nice little tin. And I've never done it with embroidery floss before, so we're going to give it a try. Uh, so this should, in theory, help us not have as many knots. And uh, just the strands should stay together a little bit better. So all you do is kind of get your thumb on there and pull pull your thread through there. And I do this with sewing thread, uh, but I haven't done it with embroidery floss, but in theory, it's supposed to be just as nice. So I'm gonna go through one more time. I can see the indentation. Oh my God, you guys, this smells so good. It smells like, uh, like, a, um, like a Washington rainfall. Like it smells like um, pine trees. Oh my God, okay, it's even better on the thread, the smell, than just smelling in the in the can. So uh, totally recommend this. You got the, Linda said that she got the Huga scent and I love the scent. So I actually did get that too. That's the one that I brought on vacation with me. So I don't have that, but so I have, they have the Huga, which is like a, like almost a pear, like a warm pear smell almost. Um, it's kind of hard to describe, but just like a warm, fuzzy blanket smell <laughs> like a pear uh this is this is almost like a pine not a pine scent but it does have that evergreen this would be great for holidays actually now that i'm thinking about it um like a christmas scent it's um got that uh yeah evergreen plus like a little rain smell and this earl gray this is just really nice too just again warm but like with a dry you know, richness to it. Like a little, you know, a little earthy. Yum! So I'm trying this for the first time. I can definitely tell that there's a coat of wax on here, basically. And you can see that it just, everything's holding together a lot better. So let's see. Let's, I've never done this. Let's see how it works. Oh, Anna. So it is, uh, she, Anna says she's just getting here. So these are thread conditioners. And I got them from Wisecraft Handmade. So if you just Google um, like Wisecraft thread conditioner or wisecrafthandmade.com, uh, they're little like beeswax, coconut oil um, to coat your thread. Uh, just oop, just so things don't um, tangle so much. It protects the thread from the friction of going through the fabric a ton of times. All right, I'm excited. All right, so I did tie a knot on one end. I'm gonna stitch this column here, but I'm actually going to just go from the front to the back a little far away, like four inches or so away from where I'm gonna begin. And what that's gonna do is leave me some slack that I'll, I'll weave in later. So, all right, I'm gonna leave a quarter of an inch at the bottom at least, because that's our seam allowance where we're gonna go um, so later. So let's just start right here. It's kind of hard to see because I'm on that gray but you're just gonna come up. So we're gonna do single chain stitches now. These are also sometimes called lazy daisy stitches. Lazy daisy stitches are those cute flowers, but they're actually several single chain stitches in around one spot. So what I'm gonna do is I came up, I'm gonna go back in the same hole and then come up, um, again, I'm going vertical for all of them. So I'm gonna come straight up. I'm, I'm gonna go upwards on all of these. So I'm gonna come up uh, just a little bit so I can see my needle and then I'm going to take the thread that's coming out of the fabric there and I'm just going to kind of wrap wrap behind the needle like so and uh, pull on through so that's the first half of our single chain stitch I'm not going to pull tight I'm going to leave this lazy um, so I, I am just going to leave it kind of as a loop. If I pull too tight, if I keep pulling, it's going to bunch my fabric and it's going to start looking like one fat stitch. I want it to look like a petal almost. So I'm going to just loosen this up again. Ooh, really loosen it up. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to just leave it, leave it loose like that. And the last step is to make a little anchor stitch because otherwise this loop this loop will keep popping off we we need to anchor it down so i'm going to go on the other side of the loop uh, just making a tiny stitch to the back i'm going to come through again so i'm not using a hoop um because 
I mean, you can use a hoop, but I'm not using a hoop just because I don't want to kind of wreck my edges here. And uh, this particular stitch is really easy to do without a hoop. And I'm actually going to adapt what I just did a little bit now. So let's do another one. I'm just going, we're being random again here. So I'm just going a little farther away, a little up. We're going to come up, go in the same place again. It goes straight up. I'm going maybe uh, not quite a half inch stitch but but close a little bit more than a quarter inch though let's wrap around pull through and now when I make my anchor stitch I'm gonna start the next stitch right away so I'm gonna put the anchor stitch here and then I'm gonna come up let's let's make the next one let's start it like right here So you wanna be careful not to pull too tight because we aren't using a hoop and you don't wanna bunch your fabric together. But I do think um, this is just gonna be like a nice kinda of easy process. So I, I am just kinda of trying to keep it a little bit random. We'll see how, how well I do it being random. But yeah, so this is the part where you just want to settle, throw on a movie, and uh, just enjoy the act of um, doing some handwork. Um, this is the part for sure that took the longest for me um, when I did the example piece, um, the piece that is in the actual Orphil uh, blog and everything. But it's also kind of the most fun. You know what? I can smell that uh, thread conditioner as I stitch and it really smells amazing. Okay, I'm really happy with that purchase. I remember a couple days ago or a couple weeks ago or something we were talking about different thread conditioners and I thought I'd test test some out. So I got this one. Um, I'd like to grab a few more that we discussed. Uh, someone asked, is the thread conditioner flattening the stitches? I don't really think so. Um, they look pretty normal to me. I mean, I suppose if I, since it is kind of coated with wax, if I just kind of pressed it, I'm sure they would kind of get a little squished. Um, but no, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not having a problem so far with them. It's actually, just having that scent is, is really kind of fun. The scent while I stitch. So these stitches do actually use a lot of thread. So uh, the single chain stitches or lazy daisy stitches, they, they, um, they are thread suckers. So uh, that's why I have that extra, the extra skein of floss just in case. But it also depends like how big you're making your stitches, how far away from each other. If you're doing a ton of stitches and they're really close to each other, um, I think you'll probably use more floss. Again, leave them kind of lazy so they get that nice loop. And I always like setting it down every once in a while and checking it out. Like, am I liking how far apart I'm putting the stitches? You know, uh, should I make them bigger, smaller? Some of those things I just consider and, and make adjustments as I go. Like, I think I want to make a little bit, make them a little bit more dense down here. And especially once you start um, stitching across this whole piece, you'll probably want some sort of consistency. So that'll just come as you get going though too, because your body will just get used to stitching a certain size stitch. Did you design the block from a photo of a place you visited? Susan, no, I have never been to Tuscany or Italy. I would freaking love to go. Uh, my biggest inspirations, and I, and I post some photos on the blog, the blog posts, are just like the paintings, just paintings of these villas on a hill or these farmhouses really on a hill. Um, just going on forever and I just love 
the cypress tree. So like all those tall, skinny trees going down the paths and everything. Oh man, so cool. I just love the idea of having one of these farmhouses and all painted white and um, like all the sewing stuff in there, ready to make stuff. I just think that would be, be the best. So nope, I have never been. I wish. That would be cool. All right, I'm just um, I'm trying to embroider and read your comments at the same same time here. So we'll see how that goes. I think I'm gonna jump way down here and get get one down in here. Oh, how did I amass my fat quarter stash? Uh, Lisa's asking that. Man, first of all, that. My my bin of fat quarters here. That's gotta be literally ten years old. <laughs> um, when I'm traveling and I um, see a quilt shop and I go into one of those, I will. Uh, typically, I'm when I'm at a quilt shop, I'll end up buying a few fat quarters uh, versus like yards of fabric. Um, you know, a couple fat quarters will just pop out as just being extra gorgeous. So I'll, I'll buy them that way. Sometimes I'll get like a full collection. Um, sometimes if I go to an event here or there, they might have some, some I get from my mom. Uh, but they're all pretty random and I put all of the random ones just all in one place. Um, so I know these are fat quarters, first of all, so I have the size of them there, and um, they're, they're pretty random, so uh, a project like this actually works really well for it because um, I'm not sure what the pattern is going to be till I get it, and then I can just play, play with color. Like, I'm forced to, to use all these odd fabrics together. But yeah, mostly just... Uh, acquiring them here and there from different quilt shots, shops when I go in there. But I would just, um, if you see like a fabric designer, uh, you know, shopping's online and stuff now, I would just go to like your favorite quilt shop online and uh, um, then uh, just order a couple fat quarters. They're a nice, um, less expensive thing than buying yardage and you don't have to commit as much. Um, so it's a quarter of a yard, which is nice. All right, I am going to, I'm, I'm out of thread just about here. So see, it didn't take much. Those uh, lazy daisy stitches, those single chain stitches, <laughs> you know, I had a lot of thread there and I'm already, um, already done with it. So I'm gonna do my anchor stitch, which will get me to the back. Okay, and then I'm gonna actually weave in the ends behind a bunch of stitches here. We got a fuzzle sitting in here. Can pull that out. Ooh, that's pretty stuck, that fuzzle. Okay, um, so I'm just gonna weave back and forth in the backs of some stitches like three times. I'm gonna try and grab as many strands as I can from the different um, thread in the back here. Um, so three times is that third time that kind of locks, locks it in. and. This is uh, what I do instead of tying a knot. Uh, it leaves the piece much flatter on the back. Um, all right, so I'm gonna trim it right, right close to my threads there. And this fuzzle, I'm gonna, oh, that just came right out. All right, and then where we started with this little extra knot, now I'm going to clip that away. And that's like our reserve here that we saved for um, for right now. So now I'm gonna weave in that end as well. It's a little short, probably should have made it a little longer. You only have to do this when you don't have any other threads uh, on your piece yet. Like from now on, I'm just gonna weave into the backs of stitches that I already have and that will that will use less, less thread too. But this is how I avoid knots on the back and it really, it really can make a difference, um, I think, for in your enjoyment of uh, um, stitching because 
you won't catch your thread on any knots, uh, and that's that's a big problem, I think. All right. There we go. Everything is looking okay. Let's snip the end. All right, and we are ready for our next thread here. Uh, I think, why don't, I'm gonna try the Earl Grey now. Uh, I don't have that other one near me, so we'll see how that goes. All right, so I, I, I'm doing it before putting it on the needle this time. It's just running it through. I think that's probably plenty. I'm gonna just do it once. Let's see how this one smells. Oh, these are really good. This one's good too. Okay, I'm pretty excited about these thread conditioners. I can see uh, maybe using them a little more often. This is my first time ever using a thread conditioner on embroidery floss. I mean, I've, I've used them on just um, normal sewing thread before for some hand stitching, but never floss. I always thought floss is too kind of thick for that, but I don't know, it's kind of nice so far. All right, I'm gonna weave in the ends to start. I mean, there is a waxy coating for sure, but I think that's what's keeping my threads in line which is kind of the main point. Ooh, but yeah, every time it brushes through, like rubs against other other thread, it kind of releases the smell and it's good. All right, we're ready to go again. I'm gonna just start up here. Yeah, going to a quilt shop, that's, that's the best, I, I agree, Rebecca, the best way I've discovered new little fabrics because you could just go to where the eye wants to, you know, whereas shopping online, you almost have to be more intentional, I feel like. Uh, but yeah, I mean, nowadays it's, it's tough to, tough to go in store. And I always want to touch everything too, and that's tough to do nowadays as well. Oh, Sylvia, if you haven't done these single chain stitches, give them a go. They're, they're really easy and it, they're easy to do without a hoop. And that's kind of why I chose them for, for this, this piece. Why it's easy to do without a hoop is because I don't have to go to the back and to the front often. I can just stay on the front. So you'll notice I'm never going to the back. I'm like, you know, right now I'm going from one spot to another pulling through and uh, um, down and up, you know, doing that wrapping around. I never have to flip to the back. So when you have a hoop, that that's helpful to be able to flip to the back. But this particular stitch, there's no real need for it. So this is actually um, quite fast and an easy stitch to do. But yeah, it sucks up thread though. It goes through it quickly. There, just doing a little check. We got our little scattered, um, scattered uh, lavender here. I think um, I'm probably maybe making them a little bit more spread out than my original piece, but not by much. And again, you can do this however you want. If you want to make it more like lavender bushes, in my head, I'm like looking at this lavender from a distance. But if you wanted to um, have a more defined shape, uh, you could always do, let's see, you could always do like, instead of having them all in the same direction, you could kind of bunch them and go outward. There, so like that would be a bush, and then you could start another bush a little farther up. Uh, that would be kind of a neat way of doing it too. So you just have like these rows of 
bushes. So, but it's still created the same way. You're just kind of clustering um, some of the single chain stitches next to each other. So I think that's a great option too. I'd love, if you guys try this way out, I'd love to see. Um, that'd be fun. Oh, so Pamela is saying that uh, Missouri Star Quilt Co. Um, dot com. I think Missouri Star Quilt dot com. Uh, you'd have to Google for their real website, but it sounds like they're having a a big online online sale. So that's pretty awesome. They're great. That's um, I've I've been there before. That's like you know where the that's like the quilt dream world there. That's uh, where they have just tons of different quilt shops owned by the same place, and it's just so fun to go there. But yeah, they have a, a lot of online, so that would be a fun place to get Fat Quarters. And uh, Fat Quarters are great if you have friends um, that sew and stuff too, because it's a pretty common um, size of fabric cut that a lot of people have. I mean, even at Joann's, you can get fat quarters. And they'd be fun to trade with, with friends. Like, just everyone brings their weird fat quarters that they're not sure what to do with and, and see see what they can trade. Trade them for. Let's do one here, and then I'll do one a little lower. So I'm bunching my fabric up here just because it's easier to hold. You could even... Oh, whatever, you know, I was thinking you could even go sideways. Whatever feels the best in the hand is, is what I end up doing. Um, so we're crawling up. We're crawling up here. We got maybe a third of the way done here. Let's just keep going. So we'll be just keeping on with these tonight and I'm hoping that um, we'll do the, well, for sure we'll do the satin stitch. So we're using a different stitch for the windows. We'll do that uh, tomorrow. And then for the uh, other couple days that we might work on this, um, I'm going to do the other other rows, other rows of lavender. Ooh, I can smell this um, thread conditioner, the Earl Grey thread conditioner. It is yummy too. I don't think you'd probably go wrong with any of these flavors. So maybe my stitches are getting a little close and less scattered, so I'm going to attempt to scatter them around a little bit more. Looks like it needs one down in here. You would have them different sizes, that's that's fine too. Oh, thanks Brenda! And hello um, up north there. So we are almost out of the second, oops, second um, bit of thread here already. So like I said, we are we're going through it quick with with this. I think we can get maybe one more in here before I'm going to want to weave in that end. Ooh, that one came out kind of funny. All right, there we are. So let's uh, go to the back again. I gotta do that last little anchor stitch to hold that loop down. All right, and then flip. There's all the backs of our stitches. Let's just weave in the back again. So we're doing this three times. Ooh, Christy said, I went to Michael's today and treated myself with some floss. It's been a while. That sounds amazing. Ugh, always fun to get a new little 
crafty cr supply for sure. And floss is always so fun. All those colors. All right, uh, we have to cut a whole new chunk of thread here. So let's um, let's get, you know, another, I'm getting kind of maybe closer to 36 inches, a little bit more than I typically do. Yeah, now nah, we're, we're, we're in the 24 inch area still. All right, again, we're gonna separate our threads. So it comes with six strands and I want three just to make a little thinner stitches and to not waste as much thread. So I'm gonna grab just the uh, just one, pull it out. Just kind of relax those threads again. I don't probably don't really need to do that. Let's grab another one and one more. There we go, our three strands right here and um, this one on deck. Right, let's put these back together. We'll throw it through some thread conditioner again. Something you don't have to do, but I it's a new purchase for me, so I'm playing around with with the thread conditioners. Let's let's do the rainfall again. All right. Oops, I let go of them. Let's try that again. Line them up. All right, here we go. Oh, like new crayons. Bonnie says like new crayons. Yep, that's what buying floss is like. Ooh, I, I, I like this one. And again, there's there's one more flavor, the the Huga, and uh, that flavor is like a almost like a a warm pear smell, and uh, I have that packed away from when I was traveling this past weekend, so I'll have to get that one out for tomorrow. All right, um, I'm probably gonna start stitching there, so let's weave in the ends so I end up over there. Again, this is how I start and stop my um, floss puzzle instead of having knots. I think it's um, pretty secure. All right, so we've gone this far. We're, we're a little shy of halfway done with this one. So I think, um, I think we'll get this one row done. This is, a, like I said, the part where you chill and don't rush and don't put yourself on a time limit and just kind of relax and throw some stitches into some fabric. And the extra treat of the smelling so yummy, that's, that's kind of fun. <laughs> I'll uh, put a link tomorrow to these thread conditioners. I didn't do it beforehand because I didn't um, didn't think of using them. So that was a good suggestion. Uh, and uh, tomorrow I'll put an, an actual link for you guys. So I'm doing mine in the gray, like I said, for the lavender, but if you were doing maybe red stitching, if you wanted to do poppies instead, which is another uh, crop in Tuscany, it's actually probably a little bit more common than lavender, but they do still have the lavender um, in Tuscany. But uh, you could do red stitches instead of the purple, and then I would do them in like the orange, because I think that would be you know, it, it would go well with the poppies, that orange color for your background instead of the gray. It'd look pretty good on the gray though too, red and gray. That'd be pretty striking, I think. Alrighty, 
coming along. I always like to flatten out and see where I'm at every once in a while. I think we're just at the halfway point now. Agreed, Rebecca. I'm doing all my um, shopping online for sure. We've even been doing our groceries online and they deliver to us. That's been a wonderful treat <laughs> uh, versus like slogging through the grocery store. So I don't think we've been in an actual store. Gosh. Well, I actually did go into a, a store um, when we were visiting my parents, but you know, we were, I think there was only the one storekeeper there and then me and my dad <laughs> and we had our masks on and filtered masks on and, and all that stuff too and sunglasses. But yeah, I agree. Um, we're, we are, uh, staying at home and doing delivery as much as we can, which is all the time, basically. Pretty. Ooh, Tracy says Colorado is under mandatory mask. I, I haven't, I mean, actually, now that I think of it, I have not been on the news so much for it. I don't think Minnesota is there yet, but different counties or different, like, it's almost like it's being left up to the different townships, really. So I've seen, like, a few different towns have the mandatory and and uh, see how that's spreading out but I don't think we have a statewide um, but I wouldn't mind seeing a statewide one let's just all wear masks for you know a month or two or three or four or more and just see what happens that's that's kind of you know especially if schools are gonna start and all that that's that's what kind of scares me Oh, yeah, Rebecca, I, I, I just, yeah, I don't, the idea of in-person stuff kind of freaks me out. For sure. All right. We are getting to where we only have a couple stitches left out of this floss. Again, it's so fast uh, how we're using up the floss with this. Um, just because it's these um, single chain stitches, they suck up the floss, but um, they're so cute. We've got a little loose thread here. All right, I think uh, I think we'll get one more out of this, and then uh, uh, we'll be on our next thread. I, I suspect we'll have to do at least two more threads to get to the get to the top here. But I think it's looking pretty cute. Uh, I like this kind of scattered scattered look to it that's turning out nice. Thanks, Tracy. Yeah, just having the like one little rule of, okay, they all have to go upright um, for the stitches. I think just having that one, one thing that you try and kind of stick to, I think that kind of gives it a look. All right, got to the back here again. Let's weave in some stitches. Thanks for stopping by, Lisa. Oh, so Valerie Singh in Washington, it's a statewide um, mask wearing rule. All right, here we go. All right, and we have that other other thread ready and waiting. Oh, a little 
little naughty at the bottom. Okay, let's let's try that Earl Grey again this time. This is fun though. I, I like the idea of this thread conditioner. If if for anything, just to have it as like a little like luxury item. <laughs> That's what I feel like this is for. Just something to make craft time even more luxurious and uh, isn't that the point <laughs> we want like the crafting just little pleasures just one little extra thing to just be like oh this is nice <laughs> so i'm i am uh, liking these thread conditioners if that's the only reason um oh this one's good Ooh, I like this one, but I, I, you know what? I think I like the, I think I like the rainfall one a little bit better. Oh, this one's kind of yummy too. Um, tomorrow I'll get that third one. There's the three different flavors, and we'll see what, see what that smells like. Yay, Marlene! Um, Marie, Marlene got the embroidery of the month. That's awesome. So we'll be starting the embroidery of the month up right when we're done with this which if I had to guess would be Tuesday maybe because uh, Friday tomorrow I'm hoping today we'll still finish this one row and maybe Monday maybe Monday will be done so maybe we'll do the embroidery of the month on start that on Tuesday so because I don't think the you know if we finish this one row how are we doing oh we got like 10 15 minutes yet Gosh, it's going fast tonight. Um, but uh, when we're done with this row, tomorrow we'll start up the the satin stitches on the top for the windows, so I can get, show you guys how to do that, uh, that, that next stitch. And uh, then I don't think that'll take the whole time like this is. I, I think it'll actually go very fast to do that satin stitch. So we'll probably have enough time to do maybe half of another one of these rows and then maybe we can manage to do one and a half on Monday. We'll see. We might stay, have to stay a little later or something, but it, it'd be nice to um, get the embroidery of the month done a little bit earlier. Maybe. We'll see. See how next week goes. Get one down here. Yeah, Sue's saying it looks like the thread conditioner is working no tangles. I have not had a single tangle yet, so, and like I said, it smells amazing. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not even being very careful. You know, sometimes I'll pull, like, a little slower uh, just so it doesn't tangle up or something, but I'm just not even paying attention at all. I'm just pulling the thread on through, just assuming there's not going to be anything that tangles. Uh, and it's it's been working totally fine so far. I think we're gonna get one more in over here. Fill in this little space a bit. Cute. I think, um, you know, so this is obviously not necessary to do all of all of this embroidery, but it does add just a layer of texture that I think you don't quite get when you just have the fabric. But I still think like this gray, even if you don't stitch anything in there, it kind of implies, you know, like if you're looking at a landscape of the lavender fields or something, it might just kind of appear as kind of this gray gray bit so um, I think oh I got that one twisted a little bit I think if you just had the gray that would still imply a lavender field but it's fun to put these extra little bits in Oop, I can tell my thread's getting short already it's hard to grab pretty Okay, well, let's get a few more stitches. Can I get them from Amazon? Are you talking about the, Tracy, the thread conditioner? Um, they're from wisecrafthandmade.com. 
Um, so Wisecraft is Wisecraft. Um, it might be just Wisecraft.com. I'm not. I'm not positive, but it's under her thread conditioner section. I I doubt they're on Amazon. Um, so, and if you, even if the even if she does sell them on Amazon, uh, it'll benefit her more to get it directly from her website. Amazon takes a lot of fees. But yeah, it's like a little mini pleasure. <laughs> a mini bit of luxury to be stitching with them and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much. I wasn't thinking about enjoyment when I was thinking about thread conditioners, but now it's really like like, like I said, a little luxury of yumminess. Oh my gosh, you guys. We, when we visited my parents, we, they have Disney Plus, so we watched Hamilton <laughs> for the first time. And, like, literally just watching it once, I've got all the songs in my head. <laughs> Like one viewing and you get get them stuck. And uh my husband John has his has it stuck in his head too. <laughs> so it's been just Hamilton earworms here today. Like as I'm talking to you, it's it's still like spinning in my head. <laughs> Which is just odd to be talking and have a voice in the back of my head singing. Oh, Catherine said she ordered one. Um, now she wishes that she ordered all three. Yeah, they're, they're really yummy. So did you get yours yet? Um, let me know what flavor you got. Or maybe you did. Did you get the Huga flavor? Uh, that's that's the one I originally got. And then um, Blair sent, um, from Wisecraft, sent a... Uh, the other two as well so it, it's these three so the size is a little smaller than they were in my head but this is the perfect size I mean I think this is totally fine um, and they're cute like I could just see throwing one of these with you know any travel embroidery something uh, I'm just gonna keep one in my embroidery bag I think so yeah nice little size all right I, I, this is my last stitch with this thread I, I'm definitely gonna have to get more but I think the one more will probably get me the rest of this little bit here I think we have time for that so uh, Linda seems um, thinks that Blair from Wisecraft Handmade that she has an Etsy shop as well so if you're more comfortable with Etsy um, than her site Wisecraft Handmade, then then you can look there as well. Oh, you got the Rainfall one? I'm actually really liking that one, Catherine. Um, without the, the third one next to me, I think um, I think I prefer the Rainfall one over the Earl Grey right now. It's it's a f kind of a fresher... Um, this one's kind of like a warm feeling. This one's kind of like a fresh feeling. I'm not describing it all that well though because it, it still has a warmth to it. It's not like straight pine cone or anything. It's like pine with a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of warmth, and a little bit of like rain. <laughs> I know that probably doesn't describe smells, but I think that's kind of what it smells like. Whereas this, the Earl Grey, it has a dryness to it, um, the smell, like a dry smell, like what tea leaves would maybe smell like, um, just that dry, I don't know how something would smell dry, but a little bit of dryness. <laughs> and um, then just kind of a yummy warmth to it as well. Like a warm and creamy, but with a little bit of dryness. I don't know. I like it. Oh, yes. So Sue's saying they would make nice holiday gifts for Stitchers. That is for sure. They would be great for that. Ooh, I got maybe a little more thread than usual here. I'm 
getting my three strands out of here. Two and three. All right, so we'll have one set of strands ready for tomorrow, which is great. That'll save us some time. And let's get the stitching here with these guys. All right, we'll run it through some Earl Grey. Oh, wow, yeah, I went a little crazy with the length of this. Um, I don't usually use thread this long. All right. Let's weave in the end. Yeah, sometimes I feel like I need to just Google like a dictionary for describing smells and a dictionary for describing taste. Like I feel like my vocabulary for those two things are are pretty low and all I need is like, you know, so like 20 words for smells and 20 words for tastes and I'd probably uh, be good to go at that point. But right now, not so much. <laughs> All right. Getting these last bits of lavender in here. Almost to the top. I am going to go over a little bit. Because I, I did that with the first one. I think that was kind of cute. Going over the edge a little bit. Oh yes, exactly. Like describing wine. <laughs> uh, yeah, like there's just, there's got to be, you know, all these people in food, there's got to be a good set of vocabulary for describing flavor. So, I mean, uh, it shouldn't be that hard to look something up and, and get a few words figured out. Yay! So Sue says she's starting to cut out her fabric for the Granny Squares quilt. Love! Oh, I'm happy you're going to be working on that. That is really ending up being one of um, my favorite projects. And we're going to be working on it for a while yet because I'm not quite halfway done with the blocks. And then we have that decorative border to do yet too. And not to mention quilting and sandwiching a quilt and all that so many quilts you guys i got my um triangle tangle quilt to finish yet too i'm starting to get the feeling that i'm having a lot of lingering unfinished uh quilts so we're gonna have to do something about that soon you know I, my i love home quilt from gosh that might even be from two years ago that's still just a quilt top time to get some of these unfinished guys done. I'm not quite sure how to do that, how to just magically get those done, but um, we might have to have a quilting party here soon or something. Spend some Saturdays just online um, doing some live quilting or something. I don't know. It's time though, they're starting to itch at me, these projects. And I still have my knitted um, 
my lamb pillow from Pearl Soho. That's not done yet, but could be if I spent time on it. So many little projects that aren't actually very little. <laughs> That's how it goes, I suppose, though. I'll go on a... I'll start some new ones, and then I'll get the urge to finish old ones, and we'll spend time on that. So it's, it's a back and forth, for sure. Oh my gosh, Bonnie says, I think I Love Home was three years ago at least. Ugh, it probably is. Th what's going to be fun about going back to a project like that is just um, seeing what I've learned along the way. Because I try and get better and learn new things with each project. And I know since we did that I Love Home quilt, um, I've learned and practiced free motion quilting on my sewing machine quite a bit. So I'm hoping that um, we could get a little fancy for that. And I think that was my original ten intention was to get better and learn a little bit about free motion quilting before doing the quilting on that block because there's a lot of really pretty squares that we could get um, pretty decorative. Oh, Luann's asking how many uninfinished quilts. Oh, I don't even want to count. Uh, it's not as many as some, I'm sure. So I have um, the koala quilt, the I Love Home quilt. This one I'm going to overlap into the building a little bit. I think that it's kind of fun, like a plant in front of the building. Um, the Triangle Tango quilt, I mean this quilt, the Splendid Sampler 2 quilt, the Granny Squares quilt, so god that's six so far and that's just off the top of my head. Oh if you want to count my Leader and Ender quilt, that that I just kind of see as a project that's growing on its own. <laughs> I don't feel like that's something I need to get done. I mean, technically, my emergency craft kit has a quilt project in there, so technically that's another quilt that's not done. But again, that one I kind of don't see as a thing that I'm finishing. It's just there. Yeah, that's true. Uh, jo jo Joelin says um, that my koala quilt is almost done, then I can... Uh, cut that one out of out of my list of unfinished that's true so when we do have a moment like a free day or something I think I would like to work on that all we have left is the label and really it's deciding what what do we want on that label to say on that label to kind of mark the project like talk about the project and that we all contributed to the quilt and and all that um, so just what text and then how are we putting that text on like am I just gonna write it um, are we gonna embroider it I don't know and then we got to get that label on the quilt as well but the binding is done Ugh, I feel good about that oh Sue says I love the koala quilt that that I ugh. I just said I love I mean, the, the granny square quilt is one of my favorite quilts but that koala quilt I am really happy with that, and I love that we all worked on that together. I, I just, that's a favorite for sure. All right, we are just about done with um, this little gray bit. So it took us a little over the hour, and I think as I got up closer here. My stitches got a little bit closer together than they were down here, but that's fine. I feel like this is maybe my warm-up, and now this is probably how they'll be for the rest of the piece, um, which is fine. No one's going to see that it's a, a hair different. I think we're just going to get one more here, and I want to kind of overlap it again because I think that's kind of cute. Just a hair. Oops, forgot to loop it around. All right, I think we will let it be at that. So I just need to make that anchor stitch on the back. And I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna get a new piece of thread um, for my next, for the next bit, because this isn't that much, especially since these stitches take a lot of thread. So let's go to the back. 
uh, weave in the end. I think I'll jump down here and, and weave in the end a bit. A third time is what does it. Keeps it from coming unraveled. Okay, let's take a look. We'll zoom back up here. Oh, see, just look at the texture it adds to it. I mean, it's kind of a little magic how it just adds that little bit of oomph to, to the piece. And it actually kind of um, calms down how dark the stripes are. It just lightens and brightens it a little bit as well. So, man, I'm excited for, for this to fill the, these other two um, with those stitches as well. Um, it's going to make these stripes a little bit more subtle, and I think that's going to be fun too. But tomorrow we'll get these, um, the windows in. So again, ooh, I'm almost out of batteries here. Like, again, here's the windows from the example. It is with satin stitch. And uh, that's what we're going to do next. They're all drawn on already. I think it's going to be really pretty with that purple. Um, I think it's going to pop, even though this is a really busy piece here. I think, I think the... The um, it's gonna the purple's gonna pop on there. So awesome, you guys! All right, I'm gonna flip you around. We'll call it an evening here. Okay, so thank you guys again for joining me here tonight. Here's what it's looking like. Oh gosh, yeah, from far away, look how much lighter, look how much lighter this stripe is. It is really different, isn't it? So that's, um, and it makes it different than the trees as well. So it makes it look like we're doing two different colors, even though it's the same, uh, the same fabric. Ooh, I like it. Exciting. So I'm, I'm all for this extra little step of embroidery. I know this is the long part. It took us a day, well, like an hour to sew this whole thing. Uh, but it's going to take us like four or five hours to actually do all the stitching. Uh, but that's the nature of embroidery and it's the, what you just need to chill into and it gets relaxing then. Uh, so when we're done with this again, we'll be working on the embroidery of the month. So something very similar. Uh, in the fact that we'll be doing more of those single chain stitches. These are more lazy daisies where they're around um, in a flower around a center point. So it's more like a flower. But this will be great practice, uh, this Aurafil block of the month. Great practice for the uh, embroidery of the month that we'll be doing, uh, my embroidery of the month uh, for Penguin and Fish that we'll be doing after this Aurafil project uh, this week. So uh, there's the pattern still available, as is the bundle that comes with uh, my new line of thread. Um, so you can play with different colors with the um, embroidery of the month scissors. Uh, so thank you, you guys, for joining me. Uh, I will see you tomorrow. Have a great evening. Good night.